Welcome to Wallaby, Holland. I don't know if I said that right. Wallaby? Yes, that's more like it. And uh, this is a park that I've wanted to come to for so long. And finally today we're here. And I've also wanted to come to their haunt event for the, so long as well. In fact, this is the first haunt event in Europe that I ever really heard about. Saw some video of and I was well impressed and always wanted to come into a tent. So here we are now for the first time. There's also some amazing coasters inside, including Untamed, which is one RMC that I've had my eyes on for some time. Now obviously I've been on a lot of RMCs now, so I don't know how it's going to hold up for overall how good it is, but I'm sure it'll be alright. Alright, we don't have much time. It's about six hours that we have in the park today. I have a bunch of scare mazes to go through, scare zones. I got all those credits to cover, plus all the other rides too. So hopefully it will be an efficient day. It does look like it might be a little bit busy as this event is very popular in Holland. Alright, let's go inside. It's Wallaby Holland for the first time. Obviously have to uh, wrestle with my first impressions as I wander through the park as well. So we'll uh, try to get the majority of the content in early while there's still daylight out, which is the reason why I'm going to do all these rides as soon as I can. But we're not going to mess around. We're going to go straight to the back of the park and we're going to get on Untamed, which no doubt will have a significant line. Or maybe not. RMCs tend to really power through queues pretty well. It's a park map. Lots to check out here. And we're going all the way to the back. I'm not going to lie, this is probably one of those days where I'm going to do ultra fast passes if I can because as much as uh, I'd like to save some money, when you're first coming to a park and you have some big credits to get in and it's pretty busy and you can kind of tell, I just went into a place and saw a fair amount of people waiting for just one ride, so... Alright, so just need a little bit of a setup here because uh, this is pretty extensive and pretty expensive. Uh, it is €9.50 for each haunted house for a ticket for that. I'm sure that limits the amount of queues for it, but uh, that wasn't the case at Thor Park, so I don't expect that to be the case here either. Uh, that is just for three haunted houses. In addition to that, you have experiences, which are walkthroughs of only yourself, that cost upwards of €25 Euros each, which is astronomical, really. But I guess they take this stuff very seriously. Um, I guess if you are a pass holder, you might consider doing one of those each time you come to this event. But essentially none of the scare experiences are free. You gotta pay. And uh, if you get, say, a RAP pass, you, for 40 euros you can kind of get everything. In addition to that, there's two walkthroughs that are already sold out, so I won't be able to do those today. Uh, they're called scare zones, essentially, but for some reason they're not part of the general park which is kind of unusual. And yeah. kind of glad I have these express passes because I know I'm going to be harassed a lot at this park. I already had an unfortunate incident with someone in the uh, VIP pass area where uh, even though I was already at the counter, they just pushed themselves into me repeatedly and then like tried to scare me down on the way out. So I stared them down as well. Welcome to the scary, the scariest business here may be the crowd and not the haunts themselves.
to sound the Parks Vacoma boomerang first. Technically, I've already done Untamed, but that's going to be a story I'm going to tell after this ride. So it's technically second, but uh, yeah, we'll do the Untamed review in a bit. Uh, for now, I do have fast lanes, so I am going on all the major attractions really quickly. We're going to get that out of the way. The thing about this Vacoma boomerang, which has always fascinated me, however, is the fact that it is got an enclosed tunnel at the start of the ride which to me is a very inspired decision as it has lighting effects and such inside too so it's going to be very very cool or so we hope I'll give you a review on the way out We're going through a scare zone now, which is called Nightmares. Now, uh, in addition to what happened to the GoPro policy here, unfortunately, one member of the public recorded a haunted house walkthrough in its entirety, which they're not too pleased about. Look at this area though, it is quite immersive. Kind of like a better version of the one at Bush Gardens, Tampa, based on storybook characters. This is the kids area that they've transformed into a scare zone. They do have a daytime scare event as well, which did take place today. It probably would have been wiser. Unfortunately, my itinerary did not allow for me to get here earlier. All right, we're moving on. We're gonna go. There was some beautiful shots of Untamed. I will be honest that when I did get my ride on it earlier, that with the sun coming down and the perspective from the onload area, there just wasn't enough time that I got ushered on very fast and I didn't get that shot. The Mac family have just announced recently that one of these is going to open up at Europa Park. Now you may have heard me complain somewhat during this scare season. A lot of parks haven't created a very good atmosphere. Well, this park seems to know what they're doing. And this whole section it's really just, this whole haunt is basically like a giant rage. some wild effects going on in this area and you go in through a bus to get on this ride which is quite awesome and this is the fast lane entrance
is a permanent setup. Pretty wild. The park is cheering me up somewhat. I'm gonna get a drink to kind of unrattle myself as well. As uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a frustrating start, but we're doing all right now. That being said. We only have one major coaster left to do before the day is through. For that, we're being intimate with high praise in this park. Lost Gravity Review was pretty decent. Uh, you know, having done Ride to Happiness only yesterday and doing re-ride after re-ride, seven rides in total, uh, obviously not the same style of ride, but it is a Mac. So I wouldn't say this is the best Mac out there. We have another zone coming up which is called Pirate's Cove, which we're going to walk through. There are so many scare attractions in this park. I get the impression this is a place that I'm either going to come back to or never come back to. I hope that I do and I come back in the day in a slower one and I can actually get some more rides in. But I'm acquiescing that that's just not going to happen tonight. It is mental. This might be the most busiest scare event I have ever encountered. It is wild. But we do have a log flume that we have as part of our fast pass offering. And it's also got some lighting effects around it too, so it looks pretty cool. Well, you can see what I mean. I don't think I'll be doing much FaceTime on this uh, particular vlog as well because if I do that, I draw attention to myself and then I get people speaking to me in Dutch and then I unfortunately cannot reply. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable, right? You can just get an idea of the lines for the food and everything. I haven't even eaten dinner. Uh, this is going to be a tragic set of affairs for me this evening. What fits a haunted experience, if you will. Scary for a different reason entirely. But I must say, it's pretty impressive, these scare zones so far. They mean business. was not on stilts. He is almost seven feet tall. I will admit the atmosphere that I had seen in vlogs earlier is spot on. It is... Overall atmospheric haunt that I've experienced this year. I do have a haunted house that I have to go through without a speed pass, so there's going to be a bit of a uh, break once that occurs. I'm going to try to get one more credit in before the sun completely is out of sight here. The good news is there is single rider lines for most of the major attractions here, so and they aren't that busy. Speed of Sounds was actually shorter than the Fast Pass lane when I left it. So we certainly will uh, wander through some of those attractions. You know, once, I think I need to sort of settle into this particular park uh, after being in Belgium and Plopsaland, which was a completely different experience than what we have here. It's bar time. I must admit, I have, I honestly 
This is going to be the most yin and yang vlog of all time because, uh, you know, the lighting and the atmosphere is really impressing me so far. We're almost through most sections of the park now, so this is really the last one that I have to experience. Just to give you a perspective on what's going on here, speed of sound, the Vekoma boomerang was on approximately an hour wait. And Condor, their uh, Vekoma SLC, which is not a popular ride by anyone in any stretch of the imagination, is on also a little over an hour and a half, actually, their wait for that ride. So it is pretty mental here right now. So, you know, if you want to go in the sombreros, you're good. You'll probably only wait 10 to 15 minutes for that. Even the park employees seem to be a little, uh, you know, they're, they're all, I have to give them credit because people are just coming left, right, and center with like questions and like not waiting for others and just like bang, bang, bang. They're on it. They're on it. Like they're doing very well. They keep a very good, jovial. They're honestly the only people that are nice here right now. I hate to say it, but that just seems to be the case. Um, that is not my normal Holland experience. I'm going to say that much. I come to this country more than any other country in the world, and that's not going to change. It may just be one of those days. Anyhow. It's getting better now. I'm doing a lot better. Not that that's the concern. Enjoy the sights, guys. Those of you that like atmospheric vlogs, you're gonna get a lot of that tonight. Look at how close this particular element is to the exit queue. It's amazing to me actually because at uh, Blackpool they have like a barrier that keeps, uh, I don't know, it's like a purpose-built barrier to keep any falling objects fall on top of like the train, whereas here they just give zero beliefs. <laughs> If you can see what I mean right there, like that is madness. That was rough. And this is the first Vekoma SLC that I've ridden without those vet or with those vest restraints. Pardon my uh, slip there as I chugged that beer before I went on the ride. Lighting effects, amazing. Definitely add to the ride itself, but even with the vest restraints, it was rattly and definitely lives up to the reputation of being one of the most roughest SLCs out there. It's one of the originals, so it's been around for a while, but even with those lack of horse collars, not feeling it, I'm afraid. It was pretty bad. Let's get on to something that has a good reputation. Going off to do Goliath now. It's the last major ride that I have to do. Um, there is still the Express, but uh, that ride, I'm sure, is going to render me uh, a little rattled. We are in another scare zone called Villains. I gotta point something out though. These lasers, 
This laser cage feature, if you can see it, is pretty wild. Try to get a good view of it. There it is. Let's go inside. Scare zones have been something else so far, I'm gonna admit. I am loving them. why this particular haunt is so well attended. I think you can see why. And we haven't even done a house yet. my third Goliath, Six Flags Magic Mountain, La Ronde, and now Wallaby Holland. The only remnant from its Six Flags past, Goliath. I'm excited. This is my favorite design of a roller coaster ever. Intamin, Hyper Coasters, Mega Coasters, Giga Coasters, Whichever variation you get with this track design, I am a huge fan. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> we are being welcomed. <laughs> Cycle shock done. I'm not sure what the theme was, but then it kind of made sense towards the end that we were in a psych ward. But the beginning of it was sort of like an industrial site with like oil drums and that kind of stuff, heavily industrialized sort of aesthetic. And then as you went through it, it increasingly got more on topic. Wasn't really impressed with the first half. Uh, I felt like some of the set pieces in that were just not really that. Um, uh, finely detailed and showing evidence of the money that normally for a haunt event you would put together, if that makes any sense. It seemed a little bit cheapish. And then the second half, towards the end, you go through this uh, cell room with like a very unique setup considering that I did the cell block in Tully's just recently and that was unbelievable. This was a smaller sort of idea where you had like the actual cell doors that you walk through a corridor and they were backlit with strobes. It was very effective as people sort of jumped out at you. All right, I wouldn't say it was that excellent though. I'm gonna give it a three and a half to four out of 10, to be honest with you. And for 9.50 euros, or nine euros 50, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried about the quality overall of the haunt, so I'm not really missing out on those $25 euro ones, that's for sure. All right, let's carry on. I'm probably gonna do Untamed next before my next haunted house. Maybe crush another Grolsch. But overall, the night is getting a little bit better for sure. All right, enough I said that. We're gonna carry on. Sometimes you just 
just have to have a fantastic experience on a ride with locals to change your mood entirely. And that is exactly what I had on Goliath. What an awesome time. Uh, yeah, there, I got straight onto the back, which was kind of more crucial as Untamed waits for another ride and me in the background. I'm going to get back onto that later for the single rider queue. It's not moving so fast, but uh, I'm sure I'll be able to get at least one more ride on it. Also to note, uh, well, first of all, Goliath, yes, great little Intamin uh, hyper coaster. Not exactly the, uh, it's not a mega, it's not a hyper, it's not a giga. It's under 200 feet. But in the dark, it was very sensational. It's uh, a lot of fog that it actually takes those helices in, and there's three of them. Great airtime, great ejector, just a good, smooth, proper Intamin, and one that I've been salivating over for years and wanting to get on, and finally I did. This is a pretty wild event. It's taken a bit of time to get used to. Uh, maybe a beer or two definitely helps. It is basically a big party. And it is really only a week before Halloween proper, so it makes sense that it's as busy as it is. This may be one of the most attended on events in the world. I don't know. It's certainly, when you think that Amsterdam only has half a million people, I can't even think of like a city of my size feeding this park. It would be out of control. But for now, we're going to enjoy it for what it is. I got one more credit to cover because um, I, I don't think the junior credit is actually running, but we'll find out about that later. Uh, so it is express that I'm going to go on next after I finish my drink. And then we're going to just focus on getting some nice atmospheric shots for you of the event because I don't really think uh, with the single rider queues moving the way that they are that I'm going to get on much other than one more ride on an untamed at the end of the event. Of course, we've got two more houses to do as well, so stay tuned for all that action and a little less of me probably after this. Time for Express Platform 13. Some very unusual theming at that. This is not actually part of the queue line. It's, queue line. it's like a scare mix.
here, man. This is Jefferson Manor, which we are late for. <laughs> One would hope that we can get in. Okay, I did get into Jefferson Manor, luckily, and uh, yeah, that was a half an hour late on my ticket, uh, but looks like it's all good. That was a much better haunted house. The theming in it, as you would expect from the manor blueprint, because it seems like every haunted event has a manor-themed uh, haunted house, for, you, for lack of a better expression. Really kind of unique in the sense that the interior is great lighting, all grayed out, and just sort of like made to look like it's, um, I don't know really how to say it, but it was kind of like, stonework like the whole house inside was basically built out of stone that it just sort of weathered away that in addition to um, boards along the in addition to that you have boards that light shone through that kind of really added to the effects but what was the best part well the conclusion where you had an actor flying over the hallway was excellently done lots of good little uh, pop-out windows as well like mirrors that you look into and then suddenly a scare actor pops out of it. So that was really effective and I actually liked it. I also like the fact that they have sound cues for all of the actors when they pop out at you too. So they have like a sound that sort of like blasts at you. There's so many people here that you're going through it with like, uh, you know, a constant stream of people. They're very good at getting the people through these mazes. So there's not really been that much of a wait. But that being said, it takes away from the effects and the scares. Much like Hollywood Horror Nights in, or, uh, in Orlando does. So there's just so many people here that you, you can anticipate what's to come. Got one more house to do, but that was a substantial improvement from the last one, that's for sure. Scare zones are excellent. The lighting, the fog, the atmosphere, the set pieces really uh, maybe a step down from that event in the sense they don't have quite the same amount of budget, um, which is evident in some of the houses that I just went into. But uh, yeah, probably like the best scare zones that I've seen in a haunt event outside of that particular Hollywood Horror Nights spectacle, if you will. Uh, and people are really into it. Last haunted house, the villa. Also, I should mention that each one of these houses has a double marquee, essentially. You have a pre-line, then you get checked in, and then you wait in this marquee. But the marquees are moving real fast. As soon as you get into this section, you're pretty much in the house within about five minutes or so. All right, villa is done. Um, we're getting back to that original house as far as quality of theming. The only thing that saved that particular maze was a Hannibal Lecter room and also uh, towards the end, the IT tunnel, which was actually really well done. Uh, if you get here, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's hard to describe it, but all backlit. Farewell. <laughs> are we saying hello to... We are saying hello to First Drop and Canadian and American viewers. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. How was your evening? It's amazing. It's amazing. Can't you see? Can't you tell that it was amazing? How many victims? Enough. Enough. We've got lots and lots of blood, which is good. I love it. Farewell. Bye. 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 Uh, you kind of
I could figure out, it was a movie themed uh, attraction. It was very kind of confusing actually. Security is getting in position to get everybody out of here, so we got to go to one last attraction that I forgot. Uh, which is Lost River, just on the other side of here. The clinic, one of the standalone walkthrough attractions where you experience it alone. It's not a new attraction, so it may be something that we try next time we are here. themed attraction and uh, yeah I definitely rated the theming and the lighting as some of the best that I've seen but uh, as far as the ride experience is concerned it wasn't uh, so crazy As well, just a large area. <laughs> this is like a carnival of freaks, but it's just a massive scare zone at the same time. Of which there's a large show going on. One last ride. If I can make it in time, there's only 10 minutes. Am I that crazy guy that ends a vlog and a visit to this park on a water ride at nearly 11 at night at the end of October? Well, yes, I'm that person. If they'll allow me, we're gonna do it. We're gonna miss one scare zone, unfortunately, but we've also missed a lot of like the individual haunted attractions here. It's just been so mental of a day. This park is unreal during haunt. I knew I expected a lot, I heard a lot, but the word of mouth is not even just word of mouth. Everyone here locally clearly loves the event. A couple of notes though, if you don't like smoking, you probably uh, should avoid maybe even coming because uh, yeah, smoking in line is not a thing that's banned here, that's for sure. In addition to that, uh, there's not that many kids here. It's definitely more of a teenager and adult event than anything that's kid friendly, that's for sure. Uh, for example, there's no no boo necklaces or anything in sight. So it's all fright here at Halloween Fright Nights. Last ride of the day, if they'll let me on it, Crazy River. We love a log flume. How many have we done at night? I can't even say, but it can't be that many. In fact, other than my home park, which has long lost their log flume. Yes, indeed so. All done with Lost River. I'm glad I got on that. Two turntables, backwards drop, forwards drop, and then a double down. It was really cool. I did get a bit wet and splashed all over, even though I thought most of the people there were dry when they came in, but that didn't happen for me. And also when I came down that final drop, all the lights just came on and the music went out for the haunt. It's done. That was perfect timing in that sense. All right, we're gonna make our way out because now the park is closed. I can't say I am depressed about leaving. I'm actually very happy <laughs> that this event is now done. One of the most expensive 
Halloween events you can imagine. If you were to do everything that this park offers, all 13 events or attractions related to Halloween, you would spend 118 euros, which is really exorbitant considering that the mazes aren't really that top quality. In fact, I'm just going to call it for what it is. Um, great scare zones, great atmosphere, very poor haunted houses. I'm not really too much of a fan. I'm saying this aloud as I know Wallaby doesn't like criticism, but it has to be said because it's so expensive. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really kind of in a weird situation where I like certain elements of this event and then I really didn't like certain other ones. And I know people are going to say, well, you know, you should have planned this better. Maybe you shouldn't have come so close to Halloween. Yada, yada, yada. I've been to a lot of haunts around the world. I have the comparison on my side. And uh, as well as it is pretty well managed, and uh, the, the staff and the actors and everything are very enthusiastic about what they do here, I just, yeah, it's just left me feeling like there's something worth lacking considering the cost and price point of what they put together here. I know my home park is going through the same situation right now with massive attendances. Okay, so you have a world-class RMC. You have what might be one of my top 10 coasters of all time. Maybe. I still have to do the tally on it because it was exceptional. I loved it. It was the perfect time of day to do that ride. I got the back seat. I had to insist on the back seat. See, the thing is, is that for 55 euros, and to give you that gold pass for one ride on a ride, you really should have your choice of where you sit. And I had to argue with the guys uh, in the station about where I personally thought was the best seat because they're like, go to the front, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to the front, I want the back. So I at least got the back, and what an incredible ride. It really is like a tightly packed in, perfectly constructed RMC. It has both elements going for it. Uh, that All those unique elements, like wave turns, that crazy turnaround section, and inclusive of uh, a great run in back to the station which reminded me of Goliath. The speed was precedent on that ride and that's what makes it such a good one. And having just got off, uh, got off of Steel Vengeance only recently, yeah it definitely is up there. It's not going to beat Steel Vengeance so calm down, but it's definitely one of the best RMCs in the world as far <laughs> as this guy's concerned. Um, Unfortunate that I couldn't get another ride on it. I would have certainly liked to have done so, but uh, there's only six uh, adult coasters in this park, so the value, as I've already bantered on about, uh, yeah, it's just not there, especially if you're coming to an event like this. I look forward to possibly giving this park another chance, but it's not going to be anytime soon, sadly. I would think, you know. I've contradicted myself many times before, and this might be another time where I do. Anyhow, fantastic ride. Goliath, a fantastic ride. Express 13, actually, I found really good, considering it was Outer Limits Flight of Fear with a way better theming package as far as I was concerned. Definitely enjoyed that too. But now, I'm going to enjoy getting on to Arnhem where I'm going to be staying tonight because uh, yeah that was a lot to take in. I'm glad I came. It's taken a lot and I will say though that Wallaby also took forever to post their hours for when they were going to do the haunt this year. Like they announced it like three weeks before it started so it was really hard from afar to plan this and to actually make it work for the itinerary. So that's part of the reason why I'm here on such a busy day. But alas I got the full package I guess. That's what it's like being at a crazy uh, Halloween Fright Nights event here at Wallaby Holland. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I apologize if some of you don't agree with what I said, but I'm just talking from my personal experience on the day as a solo vlogger at this park, and maybe on another uh, opportunity uh, that may be more positive. Probably about a 4.5 out of 10 overall for the park, outside of some incredible rides that are included inside. 
Mm, two. All right. Thanks for watching.